Anthony, All what's right. up, man? Hello. How are you? Hey. hey, I'm good. Nice to meet you, man. All right. Likewise. <laughs> Thanks for yeah. taking a minute out. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So before you? before we get into your album, Words From My Horn, you know, COVID was quite a thing for all of us to survive. It did a lot of yeah. things to the jazz <laughs> community. How did you survive it? How good does this album feel to have coming out now with the world waking up? Yeah. Honestly, recovering from the pandemic, I mean, I feel like it couldn't have been better because that was a really rough time. I remember I had just graduated from school at that time, and then I lost all my gigs like every other musician in the world, and so I had no work. And so I ended up spending a lot of time with my family in Florida, but it was also nice taking some work on music and enjoy family. But I feel like that put me in a good mental space to create, um, and I mean... Coming out of it, it's been great. So I'm really glad I was able to record that music, you know. So going to school during that time, did you waver at all about whether or not you were going to be a musician? Were you like, man, I'm already getting into a a, a <laughs> genre that isn't as fruitful as others. So did yeah. it did it did it hinder you at all? It didn't. No, it didn't hinder me at all. It was a little daunting at times, but I embraced the struggle. And <laughs> I was like, I'm a musician, so I'm going to power through this and do whatever I have to do to make it. And it was nice, though, because I feel like because we were all inside, there was like a need for the music, like people wanted it more. So I felt like it was nice. We ended up playing in spaces like outside and all of these like pop up shows and like people were more giving and supportive yeah. than I've ever seen. Yeah, I really did wake everybody up. You know, as somebody that's a fan myself, I know that whenever anything was going on, we had plex pod shows here in kansas city which were like shows with cars spaced out and you open up the hatch and it, they were full man i mean everybody was really getting into it so it was good for sure um so as your debut album this is quite a shout into the world of jazz how does it feel yes. it feels great <laughs> this music has been a long time in the making and it i mean you know people listen to the songs but man so much went into the creative process of writing the songs and then the life experience experience that you have to live through to write these songs so man i'm just glad we documented it and the music for me like it couldn't have come out better so i'm really thankful to every single person who helped make the music you know special and i can't wait for people to hear it and yeah, i'm excited yeah well speaking of people what are you hoping the listener gets from this album well I always try to write music that's going to like uplift people and like give them a sense of joy. I feel like that's kind of one thread through my music. It always has like this optimism to it, you know? So I want it to be something that they can listen to when they're in their car and something that's going to get them through their day, you know? Right on. So let's go back to the beginnings of your life. Where were you born and raised and how did these seeds of not only music, yeah. but jazz get into you? All right. Well, I was born in Terre Haute, Indiana. I lived there until I was five, and then I moved down to Florida, and that's where I was primarily raised, so I'm definitely more of a Floridian, um, and that's also where I found out about jazz music. When I was going to sixth grade, my mom encouraged me to play trumpet. I didn't want to do so, but you know, I, I was like, okay, I'll try it out, and she said, you can quit it after a year if you don't like it, and I fell in love with it, you know. <laughs> and right on. now i'm here <laughs> yeah who were early influences for you who who really inspired you to not only play the horn but to love jazz well man i, I feel like my love i mean i come from a musical family in a sense like everybody in my family they love music so i've always heard great music growing up um but i never quite heard i never actually heard jazz music so when i found that it was by accident i heard a recording of freddie hubbard playing and i didn't even know it was freddie hubbard at the time but it was him and that is what inspired me to actually be a musician and then from that i just wanted to hear as many jazz trumpet players as possible and my grandfather loved music so when he found out i was into it he would send me cds with like maynard ferguson or chris bodie lewis armstrong just everything and I was constantly seeking out the music. And that's how I found out, like, the world of jazz trumpet. So what was the first live show you saw that blew you away? Ooh, the first live show. Well, um, when I was going to high school, there, there's an arts high school um, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, um, Dillard Center for the Arts. And they have an amazing jazz program there. 
and they compete on like a national level. And so when I was looking to go to high school, I was like, I really want to pursue music. And so I want to go somewhere that's going to help me with that. And so when I found out about Dillard, I was like, well, I'm going to go check them out. And they had people like Patrick Bartley in the band at that time, Russell Hall, like just all of these incredible musicians. So I was like really looking up to them. And when I heard them play, that really made me like want to go to Dillard. And then when I went to Dillard, I ended up going to like essentially Ellington, the essentially Ellington competition in New York. And that's how I started to meet like people like Wynton Marsalis and, you know, the people in the Lincoln Center Orchestra or like even hearing people like Sean Jones. And so, it, yeah. That had that has to be pretty magnanimous for any musician to be able to meet a force like Wynton. What was that like? Uh, <laughs> man, I was so nervous the, the first time I met him because he just has like such a presence because yeah. I, I used to listen to him all the time. And like then I was like, oh, man, he's like five feet away from me. That's the dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so it yeah. definitely. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say that whole Marsalis family, it's like this lineage that's been passed down and they're all just kind of these matriarchs of the art, you know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so what was the first stage that you played on? Where you're like, man, I made it. I, I am. I'm here. This is my this is my life. I love it. Oh, man. I feel like I'm always <laughs> looking for the next thing. I don't know, but I've definitely had a lot of beautiful per performances, like probably one of the greatest up to this point in my life was playing in Marciac with Winton. Um, and he had a band of all these younger musicians and we, we played in Marciac, France um, and just playing next to him, someone who was, you know, like my musical idol and hero. You know, <laughs> that was kind of a full circle moment for me. Yeah. So in this process of being a professional musician, what do you look forward to the most? I mean, you got recordings, you got live music, you promote. There's all these things that we don't see on the back end. But what is it that gets you moving and motivates you to be a musician? Well, um, well, I remember I was talking to one of my teachers from school and I, I remember they were like, really into music so we would bond over that especially jazz music and i remember them telling me you know that like you know when they go home like for them music is their thing that they can relax to and kind of kick back and they were just telling me how much they appreciate what i do as an artist because it, it means a lot for them and does a lot for them in their life so honestly getting in a room full of people and playing music that actually reaches them and makes them feel something and then they tell me like that this song made reminded them of their grandfather or reminded them of this. Like, I think that means the world to me to create that in someone. So you're obviously a part of a tapestry, a story of, of jazz. And, and there's so much that goes into it from Winton to Miles to, to, to modern cats. What do you love the most about jazz? What is, what is it that you love? Oh man. <laughs> Well, there are so many things. I, I love the freedom of the music. I, I think when I think of jazz music, I think of like freedom. I love the interplay between the musicians because that's something that stuck out to me when I first heard the music. Like I heard this video of Freddie Hubbard playing with Herbie Hancock, Joe Henderson, Ron Carter, and Tony Williams. And I've never seen instruments interact in that way. It was almost like a musical form of like basketball. It's like everybody was doing something and picking up where somebody else left off and that interplay and like it's limitless like it can go anywhere um yeah so yeah so of all of the modern players that are out there right now who would you love to see live who who are you kind of itching to see play live Ooh, <laughs> i've seen so many of them play live i just heard nick payton like a week ago at smoke that was incredible yeah um I'm trying to think who would I love to hear I'd honestly I haven't heard Winton play in a while so I'd, I'd love to hear him do a show probably as well like with a small group or something or maybe even Sean Jones would be nice you know Winton Sean Ambrose I actually just saw him recently too right on um, yeah. yeah New York is like the best yeah oh man <laughs> forget about it I would love to get up there let's say you get into a time machine where are you going to go back in time any musician from the world of jazz who would you want to see live hmm uh uh honestly th there are so many that I would want to see like 
but I think for me, I would want to see Booker a little because I feel like, you know, he died so young that there's so much that's not known about him. But like at 23, he was able to play some of the most incredible trumpets. So I would have just loved to have felt his sound in person and even in, to have talked to him. So, you know, the one thing about talking to musicians whenever you have an album come out is that you've moved past it. Like you're promoting it, but creatively you've moved on. So yes. <laughs> as you kind of look on down the road, what are you looking at? How, what are you, are you, are you looking at your releases as an evolution, as a statement of now? What, what are you, what are you looking to do as you move forward as a young musician? Yeah. Well, yeah, as a musician, I feel like I'm always growing and evolving. So th that's why I think it's important to document where you are because when, you know, at the end of the day, you know, 60 or 70 years from now, when I'm not here, it's like, you know, I will have my music and the, you know, the people who knew me, but so I want to leave something that kind of represents my legacy and just document where I am. So I feel like it was important for me to record this first album so that, you know, I could move on. So like people can see where I am at this stage in my artistry. This is like my first step, but I have so much music that I'm working on right now. And so I, in the future, I'm going to be releasing a lot more music. And I don't know where I'm going because I'm constantly evolving, but I'm trying to document that process. The one thing that's refreshing is that now that music and live music is coming back, especially in a place like New York, what do the crowds feel like versus prior to the pandemic? What's what's kind of the feeling from the crowds and the audiences in general? Hmm. I feel like the energy I get from the audience is or depending on the space that I'm in is definitely more appreciative. I feel like, I don't know, there's like more of a yearning for the music and because, you know, we had to spend so much time inside. So when you can go and actually see something in person and see somebody, you know, doing their thing, like the feeling you get from being in the room with an artist, you know, you can't really get that yeah. from a computer. I mean, the computer was cool, but, you know, you can't really get that from behind the screen. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Like no. Yeah, no, I agree, man. That's the that's the key to all of this. And I think that, you know, there there's there's certain mindsets where people are like, a lot of people aren't coming out because they got used to watching it on the screen. But I think everybody collectively needs to understand that this art form, especially, is something that should be witnessed in a live format. All right. You know, it's very important. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, fans, but you ultimately lead the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? <laughs> Ooh, that's a that's a tough. I'd say <laughs> I'm a guy who loves music, and I'm just trying to uplift and inspire people through music, or at least music. I, I guess a person is as many things, <laughs> you know. So on the musical front, that's what I try to do. And then, you know, I'm also a brother. I'm a son. Uh, many things, an uncle. So, <laughs> so yeah. I guess I have many different roles. <laughs> Right on. Anthony, if anyone wants to pick up the debut album, see you live, anything pertaining to your world, where can they go? Well, um, I'm actually doing the the release at Dizzy's Club in New York from June 15th to the 17th, so you can catch me live there. I will also be selling the music online, so you can check my website, which is anthonyherbymusic.com um, for any updates for what I'm doing and finding my music. Anthony, thank you for taking time out, man. Best of luck with the album and your live, your, your career, and I hope we, we catch up down the line, man. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Before you go, I'd love to keep you in front of my audience. Would you mind doing a quick plug, just introducing yourself and, and your instrument, you know, coming out of New York and you're listening to my music on Neon Jazz, something like that? All right. My name is Anthony Hervey. I'm a trumpet player from New York City. You are listening to my album, Words From Our Horn, on Neon Jazz. Right on. Anthony, perfect. Spot on, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Best of luck, man. All right. Thank you. Was that, was that... Cheers. All right. Take it easy.